Good morning and welcome to uh, the last Encompass Live of 2022. Wow, <laughs> the year is practically over. Uh, um, I am your host, Krista Porter, uh, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and then it is posted in our archives for you to watch at your convenience. And I will show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our archived recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in, in, in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. So similar to your state library. So we provide services and resources to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, uh, corrections, museums, archives, historical societies. Um, really our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. Um, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, um, all sorts of things. Uh, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on and do uh, presentations for us sometimes for things here in um, that we're doing through the commission. Um, but we also bring in guest speakers often. Um, and also, um, and that's what we have today. We have a guest speaker with us. Uh, good morning, Bobby Jean. Bobby Jean Ludwig is from our University of Nebraska in Kearney. And um, this is also the last Wednesday of the month, which means it is also our Pretty Sweet Tech Day, which is usually our um, technology innovation librarian, Amanda Sweet, has a monthly show. That's always the last Wednesday of the month. Or she talks about or has presentations with speakers or anything tech related. So if you're a techie type person at your library, um, this is the day for you to uh, be here. Um, Amanda is spending the holidays with her family this week, so um, we have Bobby here to join us and talk about how to manage technology problems in your library um, using SpringShare. Uh, LibAnswers. LibAnswers? LiveAnswers. How is that pronounced? LibAnswers. Well, LibAnswers. <laughs> is that up for debate? <laughs> <laughs> like LibGuides, LiveGuides, nobody knows. <laughs> yes, exactly. So I will hand it over to you, um, Bobby Jean, to tell, take it away and tell us all about how we can do this. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm still messing with the controls. I have to stop messing with the controls. Um, okay. Yes. Okay. Hello. Uh, so, well, I don't. Um, I don't have the video. So, um, mm -hmm. I guess that the attendees shouldn't have it anyway. Yeah, that's fine. That's what happened. You'll just see your slides. Yeah. The cameras are yeah. there, looking looking good to okay. everyone. No problem. Uh, Okay, so um, yes, so I'm here today to talk about managing technology problems using SpringShare Live Answers as a ticketing system. Um, we, um, well, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just jump right into the next slide because this helps me um, <laughs> know what to say. So um, I am gonna give a little bit of background and then go into the two things that we considered and then go into a little bit more about spring share option and then um, i do hope to have a lot of time for questions or um, discussion too about um, ways of, of kind of handling this type of thing so a little bit of background um, the calvin t ryan library serves all the university of nebraska at Kearney students faculty and staff in person and online um, unk is the smaller regional university of the nebraska system um, our fte for 2021 was 4824 um, and our library staff, we have 23 total staff. We have eight uh, faculty librarians, seven managerial professionals, and eight office staff. So to me, that's a little bit smaller, but also not as small as some that may <laughs> have less than that, um, but definitely not large where you've got, you know, very large departments or very large um, people in those departments, mm -hmm. or, you know, a lot of people in, in departments. However, um, here at UNK, I am the coordinator for library technology services, and I supervise three full-time staff in what I consider our tech team, our, our tech department. Um, we have our workstation support specialist, and he is hardware and software in the library, so kind of handles the computer labs and basically a, a lot of the non-library software, um, and he is our conduit to campus IT. 
uh, our mm -hmm. web services manager, uh, he manages our library website, um, the Primo user interface, which is our discovery layer, discovery service. Um, he does also um, deal with our LibGuides and some of that and uh, social media and marketing, um, working with some of the other uh, librarians on that. Uh, and then our information system support specialist was just a very long way of basically saying our LSP manager um, and handling a lot of the um, administration of Alma and Primo um, analytics and also anal uh, electronic resources support. Uh, so handling kind of that that variety of things so I have a question about those yes, staff people yes, yes, I, it's yes. something I always wonder about at libraries because before mm -hmm. I worked here at the Nebraska Library Commission I worked at a university library uh, back in New York uh, for nine years and um, libraries are I, I think um, different from the tech stuff from every other department in the university systems yes uh, they have special you need to know something different about running hardware and software in the library than really probably any other um, uh, department in your university. So uh, we started out, had, we, we had to work with campus IT and um, that was really painful to explain to them how things work in the library, that you couldn't do certain things you think you could do in other places. So we ended up hiring our own staff person and required them to have both computer technology experience or degree and an MLS, a library science degree, so that they would understand libraries. Mm -hmm. Did you do that for these people or do you know? So Actually, both our web services manager and information system support specialist have library degrees. Um, nice. okay. More yeah. recently, uh, both of them actually um, uh, re got those those degrees. Uh, our mm -hmm. our LSP manager is I have to just say he's awesome because he was a tech coordinator, or he was he basically was the computer side, similar to what our our workstation support specialist does prior to leaving UNK doing some other stuff and then coming back into this position so <laughs> he is like the best of both worlds because he does have a very mm -hmm. yeah definitely you know um thorough computer background but then also mm -hmm. the library background um, I think that's what you need in these this kind of yes. those kind of positions you need a little of both yes. worlds yes yes and so the workstation support specialist was um like I said, is really more, and he that's that um, position is sort of even co-supervised by IT. There's, there's, I mean, mm -hmm. really, I'm the supervisor, but we do meet with, um, uh, you know, kind of an IT person and and make sure that things are on track because he is the one that has to know the things that are campus related. So new right. networking, you know, new oh, security is a huge thing right now. Um, so there's a lot of different things that he has to, st to stay on top of and be aware of. Um, and I think it would be, it would be ideal if he had a library background, but I will say that in our exact situation that we have right now, um, mm -hmm what he does have that um, sometimes is hard to find in IT people is a definite desire to help people. And so mm -hmm. he is, so having that does really fit in with our other tech team people with trying yeah. to figure out the solutions that are going to work for the library. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we do, I mean, I think everyone has to generally go by their campus IT, or if you're a public library, maybe the city or county, um, we don't always have free right. reign over everything. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Yes, it's true in public as well. Yeah, of course, yeah. there's always somebody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I think I think right now we do really have a great, and I think going forward, if if we had to rehire these positions, I would really try to emphasize have finding people with those combinations mm -hmm. um, because they are library staff. I mean, these mm -hmm. yeah. uh, even 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 um, the person who's kind of with IT, I mean, the library hired that person. So this is all, you know, people being hired by by the library. So. All right. Thanks. Sorry to just yeah. jump in no, there and that's okay. a little bit, but it's always, I always think about it with um, libraries and their IT people like yeah. where are they coming from yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and i mean it we can even tell the differences sometimes with some of the people that that um they work with who are more tech and don't have the library um background it mm -hmm. is sometimes harder to uh make the connections and and understand things you know if they don't know what a mark record is or if they don't know things like that um yeah sometimes that can come into play so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Okay, okay. Well, I'll go on to the next slide, which, um, so a little history. Um, so I started here five years ago and was immediately asked by the workstation support specialist if we could implement a ticketing system because he was, you know, using his email and he was trying to manage things. And because we are small and we're this like, you know, good group that works together, but everyone just wants to go to you and tell you and ask you questions or, or at the moment that it comes up and no matter if you're in the middle of something else. So he would get requests for things or be notified of problems while he was walking down the hall or, you know, and that just wasn't, it really wasn't conducive to getting them all tracked and, and completed. Um, because you see someone and they say, oh, I have this problem, but then you're in the middle of something. And then by the time you've gone back to your desk, you might've had three other people tell you about a problem. And it, again, just, just mm -hmm. keeping, keeping mm -hmm. track of all that um, was something that he really wanted. And so um, initially I had started investigating SpringShare Live Answers because I had attended an ERNL session on it, um, but that was very focused on just using it for e-resources troubleshooting. So I really wanted something though that we could kind of handle a variety of things, you know, maybe yes, access issues for electronic resources, but also, you know, website issues or updates or things that maybe librarian wanted something added to our website or our dean wants something added to the website, having a way to like funnel those through a system instead of just sending emails. Um, so that is what started, but then we got sidetracked by the major project, um, University of Nebraska, we did an ILS RFP and we migrated to Alma Primo. Um, mm -hmm. that was, an, that was during COVID, that was 2020. Wow. Um, yeah. And I mean, it had actually started because for anybody who's been through that, that's something I could talk about for sure too, but like, <laughs> I will not, um, but that process. That's a of, show for another topic for another exactly, show. <laughs> exactly. But the RFP process, and then this, you know, you finally get this, the selection and the vendor, and then you have to go through the, yeah, it was anyway. So, but that really was a big a big push back to this idea of having a way to track issues because we were going to have a new system. We, you know, staff was going to be having to do something new and we really wanted a better way to make sure we kept track of all that. And since it was a new system, maybe finding, you know, that would allow us to also see if the same things were coming up, if people were having the same troubles, um, just, just things like that. So we, uh, you know, wanted something again that wasn't just focused on one aspect we wanted something that could track the problems with the computers and the printers in the labs or out on our we have you know computers out on the main floors um any websites uh website updates or problems and then this the issues with the new um lsp alma and the discovery primo so that was that kind of brought it back to the surface and we really kind of buckled down on this um I I just wrote it down and I'm, um, I believe it was September 2021, um, which I think I'll actually mention later is when I think we finally got this going. Um, but when we did initially start talking about it, even though I had very much been thinking about the spring share, uh, we did have another option to consider. So the two things that we considered, and again, we considered these because they were things we were already familiar with. Um, we did not do any kind of thorough investigation out there to see what you know what the options were mostly because we needed something that we could do fairly quickly and something that again we were familiar with we were already learning a new <laughs> system um didn't really want to try to add to to that um so i mean that's that did limit what we looked at um so the spring share uh, again the pros were we could control how we set it up we were already familiar with SpringShare, and we also could transfer tickets from the reference queue because we do use lib answers. We have the chat, and so sometimes questions come through there that are definitely technical or they're an access problem, and so we can transfer it, and then it would come to me, and you know we can kind of manage that a little bit better. Um, the analytics um, I thought were, you know, were good. We could see the tickets, um, what types. Um, there, there is, there is different information you can pull out of that. Um, the con, 
cons for that obviously would be we would need to set it up and it would be an additional cost. And I'm going to touch back on that a little bit later, but um, it, we would, uh, we were looking at adding another queue, which is what mm -hmm. it it's called in the Springster world. You, you, you know, we have the reference queue, and now we have the LibTech queue, um, and that was what the additional cost was was for the queue. Yeah. Um, now the campus ticketing system. Now our workstation support, support specialist was familiar with that. Um, it would have made it easier to elevate tickets to campus IT, um, especially in some of the cases with our, you know, the computers and the printing. Uh, sometimes that does have to go to IT anyway. Um, there was some structure already in place. Uh, we didn't think there would be any additional cost. Um, however, to me, the cons were that we would definitely lose some of the control over the management of it. Um, we weren't really sure how difficult it would be in the in the long run to, to get someone to work with us on it, although we um, this came up because we had talked to someone in IT about it, which is why it, it even became um, I guess even got on our radar. Um, again, I saw it as potentially harder to get analytics, probably needing to go through IT um, instead of just having all of that at you know on my at my fingertips basically, or anybody who can log in as an as an admin uh, into the system. Um, and the truth is, the system is complicated, <laughs> and this is coming from the person who was working with it and said that even with with having worked with it for a while. It really was complicated and only one of the four of us was familiar with it. So that would have been a learning curve for the rest of us to try to figure mm -hmm. out how that all, you know, could could work out. Um, so those were those were the things that we considered. Uh, the unknown for both honestly would be uh, Get, would we get buy-in from the staff? Um, because again, they were very used to this more informal way of, you know, um, alerting us to problems, which is all fine and good. But it, again, it can it it can be problematic when you're trying to track things and make sure that you're following through and following up on things. Um, so I, I wasn't sure how that would go. Um, so we did end up going with SpringShare. Um, Again, the logistics of it were we needed to add that second queue, so we had to get that set up and, um, you know, uh, arrange that with them. Uh, the library, uh, we needed to set up the question form or basically the form that the staff do fill out um, when they submit the, the issue. Um, there is also, if for those familiar with SpringShare, you know, there's analytics side to it where you can um, I guess add different information to the ticket, uh, and and when we close a ticket, I should I should say it this way: when we close a ticket, you can choose to add it to the analytics, and you fill out different things that you set up. So if you want to know how long you spent on the question, if you want to know what type of uh, problem it was, you know things like that. Uh, you can set all that up. So we had to set that up, and we had to set the form up. Um, the form honestly can be as easy or as complicated as you want, but one of our major decisions was whether or not we were going to use routing. Um, because we did have three people, and me additionally, that would be looking at these things and each handled something pretty different, we could have a way of just having the, the person submitting the form select the you know, the, the area of the, the topic of the problem, and then it would automatically go to that person or it would automatically be assigned to that person. And we did do that because one of the struggles that I, I foresaw, because I kind of see this a little bit with our reference sometimes, is if it's only going to a general, you know, maybe a general email, or if everyone is getting every ticket, or um, uh, let me back up. With SpringShare, when someone submits a ticket, it you get an email and you can set that email to go to a certain email address. So for our reference queue, we have it, we actually have it set to go to multiple people. But there isn't any, again, there isn't any type of routing because we don't necessarily have the patron identifying what they, you know, what their their reference question is about. Um, so with the tech with the tech, uh, with the tech team, 
tech lib tech queue we have it so that the form and i'll actually show you the form you select the topic area and then it would go to that person so that person gets the email now having said that because you can also log into spring share and see all these tickets you, any of us can see other tickets i as the ad, admin and the supervisor look at all of them but the staff they generally filter their view to just their tickets but if they needed to they could mm -hmm. see everyone's tickets um, so again and even even that is even that is customizable depending on I th not customize but there's there's different settings you can have that can impact who sees who sees what um, so anyway so the routing was definitely something that we just thought would be easier because that way it wasn't just going to a general email that people may or may not know if someone else grabbed the problem or didn't know if it was for them or not and this way if they get that email they know that that's you know their pro their they've been assigned that issue uh, and i also reassign things sometimes because as i look at all the tickets and sometimes i actually get tickets because i'm more of the default like if you're not sure what the what the topic is or if it covers multiple topics um, because you could be having a problem that well you don't really know if it's just an access issue or if it's a primo issue or an all i mean it sometimes there could be multiple issues going on um so those tickets come to me and then either i i do deal with them or i assign them to uh, one of the other um one of the other people and the other thing that you can do is if you assign it you can also add a note when you assign it so sometimes i do add those notes because i'll assign it and they'll get that notification to say okay i'm assigning this to you could you please you know check this because i think this is you know what the problem is and this is under their you know under their area um, and again, I am copied on all the replies. That's something that I specifically have set up. I don't believe you have to do that. My email does get out of hand sometimes if there's a ticket going on and you've got these back and forth because I keep getting all these <laughs> um, responses. But again, I, I especially since, I mean, I guess it's been a year now, but we really, I really wanted to see the types of problems coming through uh, and things like that. So I'm gonna go to the screenshots. And I really wish I could go live into our system, but obviously I don't want to, you know, we've got stuff in there that probably shouldn't be recorded and shared to, to whoever. Sure, sure. <laughs> it's always good. To, you never know what's going to happen with technology and your connection or something won't do what you think it's going to do live suddenly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Uh, so uh, this is the, this is what you would see um, if you had your queue and you were editing or kind of managing your queue and the different things that you can change um and again if you're familiar with spring share and if you're familiar if you have a lib answers or if you do the the chat this is the same and one thing i wanted to add or say that i haven't in previous um times i've i've spoken about this topic is if you can't afford the extra queue but you already have lib answers or you already have something you know you already use it there is likely a way that you could um create the question form that could allow you to use it for multiple purposes so mm -hmm. again maybe you have maybe you have the question form be a routed thing and maybe you just have two options if it's technical or if it's more you know refer I, I mean you maybe would have to think about the wording of it but i really feel like there's a way that you could do it if that's what you currently have um though it might depend how you use it and things like that um our reference question form is very basic and so again we could have just adjusted that and if um you know again that's just because again the extra queue is a cost but if it's something you already have um maybe you use the the form to maybe try to do this and manage it uh so anyway these are the different things that you can do again you can um name it you can um i do not have it set to add to the reference analytics by default because we have separate analytics um so we have analytics for you know we have you know 
and actually I shouldn't say that. I think it breaks down by the queue. It's still all reference analytics, but I don't have it done automatically so that people can um, can uh, add in what they need to when they when they fill that out. Uh, the question form again is was the big piece that we did. So you can actually, the under quality, you can actually send uh, follow-up emails or ask for feedback, ask for the, a rating. We don't do that, um, but there is a way of doing that if you really, maybe you're larger and you do want to, to get some, some uh, feedback on customer service and how, how things are getting answered and how the patrons are feeling about, or the staff are feeling about their, their, um, their responses or their you know, the, the solutions to the problems. Uh, we, like I said, we don't, I don't currently have that set up. Um, you can set up email templates, um, notifications. I think that's about the notifications as far as who sees what responses and things like that. Uh, you can also have an SMS. You can have it be that people could text you problems. Um, we don't do that, but we do have that for our reference queue, I believe, where people can, uh, can text. Uh, so that's always another option. And then uh, in this case, I'm not sure how social media would play into it. And then, but then then language, that's uh, some of the, the, the um, labels and things like that. So that's kind of the different things that you can look at. Again, I wish I could go into more of the, the system just to show you, um, but I am gonna show you our question form. Um, so this again, I feel like we kept it fairly simple other than doing the routing. Uh, the one view is what um, you see as the, the staff or the patron. Uh, again, the my question problem is related to, now they have to select one, this is a required field. And again, we have those categories and actually the other, the other side shows you what our categories are. Um, we have library website libguides, we have library computer hardware software, we have Alma, Primo, Search, and e-resources, um, just because those are generally some of those e-resource access issues or searching problems in Primo or things that are just weird when they're trying to discover something. Um, and then each of these goes to a different um, staff member. Uh, so that's kind of how that first question, that first question is, is where the routing happens. Um, I'll jump in here and just yes. to let everyone know too, um, I did not mention this at the beginning. Um, if this slide is, because it's so, um, <clears throat> the text is kind oh. of small to see. Oh, um, okay. After the show, you Sorry. will all have access to the presentation slides as well. So you'll be able to take a much closer look at yes. all, of, all of the screenshots and everything that's on here. Yes, and there is a, I have a link later to our form as well. So late, oh, uh, in the slide. So that way, if you wanted to actually see the form live. Live and in person. <laughs> yeah. send, us some, send us some random tech problems. <laughs> Uh, so my question problem is, and then that's where they really can fill in maybe the beginning, like the, the general question and then more detailed explanation. You notice neither of those I, are um, like our required fields. Um, some, oops, sometimes those are very, um, sometimes people put a lot in here and sometimes they don't. Uh, sometimes with certain problems, what ends up happening is like I said, you end up with a back and forth or, Honestly, in some cases, once our once the, the 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 staff member receives the ticket, they might just they might go and find a time to go go talk to the to the staff member, especially if it's something that isn't making sense or is something that could be is better seen. Um, we do have some staff that will include screenshots because again, you can click, uh, you can add. Um, you can add files, so they can uh, include screenshots, which we do. You know. Um, uh, recommend if they can. Uh, and then their information. Now we did add the submitted on behalf of just for the sometime, sometimes things happen where maybe the staff member received the problem from a patron using one of our computers. So they might be, you know, they're submitting it and then they're just saying, I'm, you know, on behalf of a student that was using, you know, this or that. Uh, because one of the things that we also did, this is technically not public. This is really more for our internal, like internal. Uh, we have thought about maybe expanding it out and making it 
you know, adding it to say Primo and having it be a way that people could um, report problems and things like that. Um, Primo has recently added a way of doing that kind of within their own, with, within their system. So one of the things we're going to be doing in spring is looking at that versus this and if we wanted to expand this out to be beyond just staff um, but right now our main purpose with this was was internal was internal issues or issues that were reported to staff um, staff of faculty uh, in the library uh, again we opted to keep the form simple we did have the ability to add files and screenshots and the first question again is what controls the routing so I think, yes, we're going to go to the wrap up uh, and then hopefully questions. Uh, uh, so I, uh, I do have the link to the question form. So again, when you get the slides, you'll be able to, to, to see that if you want to see it uh, live. Um, we began using this September 1st, 2021, and we've had almost 300 tickets since then. Mm -hmm. um, Though probably a few of those at the beginning were our test tickets. <laughs> uh, I, and I will add that one thing that our, um, I think mostly the workstation support specialist has done is he has sometimes added tickets for himself. And actually I've done this as well. Um, Don't your reminders to fix something or, yeah. Yes, because there's no reason why I can't, because especially, you know, because even with this, there are things that come up or happen that get lost. So we had a thing happen recently that I'm, I needed to systematically go through quite a few things and I added that. I added that as a ticket because that way it was always there in my queue, it was always there in my list and I could kind of add, you know, I can add, you can add internal notes, you can add notes to it. Um, you know, there, as with a system, you can you can enter a response that goes to the person who submitted it, but you can also add internal notes. Um, and so I was doing that as a way to track which ones I had completed and what I still had to, to, to do. So again, you, we, we definitely do that. We definitely have um, staff. The other thing that I didn't mention, and I'm just gonna sidetrack real quick, um, you can uh, add tags to your tickets. Uh, and one of our staff does that. So he will actually tag them with different things so that if he has, you know, common things come up, he can easily go back and get all and, and pull all those tickets. Um, so that's another way. Again, there's just there's a lot of ways that I haven't really gone into that you can track things or tag things or like I said, with the analytics, the things that you can kind of pull out of it. Um, so again, the tech staff, tech team staff love it, at least from what I've heard. Um, generally feel it's easier to keep track of issues, that things don't get lost in email. And as a supervisor, I really like it because I can see kind of the overview of what types of problems are coming through, how long things are taking to get resolved, even though I don't look at that all the time but it's still you know if i notice a thing if i if i notice a ticket that's open and i feel like it should have been something that well why hasn't that been done yet i will check in with the with the person and be like hey this is still open sometimes it's just oh i forgot to close it which i do that is one of the things i will say that i struggle with is getting them to close the tickets once they're actually done um so i regularly send out you know, or, or we'll give them reminders of like, close tickets, close tickets if they're done. Um, the staff, I think, could probably still be fine without it, but I think they're getting a little more used to it. One question they often have is like, what's it, what should be submitted and, and what's not? And I usually mm -hmm. tell them to, 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 you know, if you're not sure, just submit it as a ticket because even if it needs to be maybe go beyond that, or maybe it's something that doesn't quite fit, it really is the best way of getting things on our radar and making sure that we're aware of things and tracked and, and that kind of a thing. And having a record of that, you can yes. always go, if it turns out to not be something that needed something done yes. by these particular people, by a tech thing, it's, well, here's something that keeps popping up and, you know, just having the conversations among staff doesn't track that kind of thing unless everyone remembers and keeps mentioning it, but having exactly. it in writing makes a huge difference. Yeah, exactly. And you just made me think of something else that 
this will exist no matter who these staff are and those tickets stay in this you know they'll, they'll they'll stay in the system so again if we had someone leave and we rehired and hired someone new they still should have access to some of that information um and that's the big to me that's one of the biggest things with a individual email account um we actually have uh for another area for e-resources we have a general account that we use um, but sometimes some places don't like having generic email addresses right the, mm -hmm. they want everything tied to a person but in the library that's sometimes really difficult because then if someone leaves where you know where, where does all that information go if if you've been tracking mm -hmm. things with your email where does it all go if your email goes away right. or you leave and someone you know so so the loss again, of that you, institutional knowledge is something yes that yes. people sometimes they don't think about. And when a person leaves, this will still keep that person, what that person knew about yes. or reported yes. or had issues with. And you don't have to have someone else who remembers, oh, remember so-and-so said 10 years ago that this is a thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, thank you. So I don't know, I, I think that that's, a, that's again, it, because it's it's a system that multiple people can go into. So I, I like that idea of, of having it. And again, it's it also can keep us all more accountables, which I like, because again, we have tracking and we have ways and I can see how many tickets are open. There is a, there's, if, you, if any of you are familiar with LibAnswers, there is a way that you can see the time between something getting submitted and when it was first acted on. So if you are really concerned about things not getting addressed quickly enough, you can see those metrics, like you can see that. Nice. Um, so anyway. Uh, so yeah, impl impl implementation was straightforward. Uh, I think I talked about some of these, um, but again, I didn't, I can't, didn't really show analytics, but they're, they're, they're just things that you can, you can definitely pull out that I think are useful and could be helpful for people. So with that, are there I particular think reports that, that you've pulled? That See, you... this is the thing. I really <laughs> use it more as, I don't know how to say this, like, a general way of keeping track on everything and well i am i am i do have to do my annual review and for my annual review i will likely go in and pull like the number of tickets and you know maybe uh the the number of tickets and then the breakdown of um like the area like how many tickets were computer hardware or you know computer mm -hmm. printer how many were alma primo and things like that um but yeah, that's the thing for for me personally. It's really just been more of this over overview and um, some mm -hmm. base basic numbers. Yeah, there are certain people. It's the the um, certain people have a have a brain for statistics and numbers yes. and things like that, and they are really yes. into it and yes. um, love everything you can get out of there um, out of these kind of systems, yes. and they will just go um, crazy for it and love playing with all of yes yeah. if anybody <laughs> wants to talk more about that i would be well i because i could maybe go into more specifics with the system one-on-one -on -one instead you know like i said i don't really want to share our full thing here but um, yeah. and in general if there are any specific questions or you want more details on things my email is there mm -hmm. um and i'm a I, we still have some time for questions. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yeah, of course. Um, great. Thank you. Yeah, anybody has any questions? I see there are some in here already. Um, just a reminder of anyone who came in later, use the questions section in your GoToWebinar interface. Open that up and type in your question, and I can see that. And I'll read them off for Bobby for to answer the questions. Um, first question is, uh, you mentioned just on the previous slide how many um, had been submitted since you started this. Did yes. you notice an and I don't know how you kept statistics pre lib answers. Did you notice an increase in tickets or issues being reported, or do you notice some sort of a difference? <laughs> so honestly, I don't. I don't because um, my position was created, so there really wasn't any. I mean, I I think the only uh, I, it, it, it there really wasn't anybody tracking anything prior to to to, to this. Um, I think saying. I'm trying not to say names, but I think our workstation support specialist may have some information on like how, um, like how, uh, like what he was he was taking care of. Mm -hmm. uh, so there could be that, um, but I don't really I don't really know 
Yeah, I, I, I did notice because I looked right before this, I looked at, it was interesting some of the spikes I saw, but it also sort of went along with when I think, when I knew, um, so for example, you know, semester times, right? There's always certain peaks during mm -hmm. the semester. So, right. and then there's summer, summer was quiet, but then there was something where we, when we were trying to implement something, there was kind of a little bit of an increase. Uh, so I actually, I think now that I, now that I've looked at that, and like I said, now I'm working on my review, I think I, I'm going to look at some of that to see if there were, um, if things, you know, differ, if there were kind mm -hmm. of peaks and but in general I think in general it's probably yeah I would I would definitely have to um find out from from mm -hmm. so it's not a feeling of like oh my gosh suddenly we have so much more work because we implemented no. this it's still the same amount of things right. happening or being reported generally yeah yeah, I think so. But yeah. it's interesting that you say that because one of the other things that we had talked about when we first started, talk, you know, before we implemented it was um, I told them that I also wanted to see how much of their time then was spent dealing with problems um, mm -hmm. as opposed to maybe doing the other tasks that they should be doing. True. Uh, mm -hmm. but, the, but the other side to that is most of them have a part of their job that is dealing with problems or dealing with those types of things. So it wasn't necessarily that I was looking for that. So we, anyway, so we had a conversation though about, well, how are you going to, I think at the beginning, maybe there was a little bit of a concern that I was going to somehow use this, but and I think you could, you could use it in many different ways as a manager, but uh, really, my our main goal was to just have a way to track things, mm -hmm. have a way to track things and get them done because yeah. it just things were getting lost. I mean, I had things mm -hmm. get lost in my inbox that I found oh, yeah. a month later that, oh, I was supposed to, you know, follow up on this and I never did because we all do that. Yes. Yeah. I am guilty as well. It's it's, it's the way world, the world is. <laughs> it's life. <laughs> um, and so I guess you also didn't notice any sort of like a decrease because you said the staff pretty much have taken to it pretty easily. Nobody suddenly said, you know what, I'm not going to report anything anymore because I just don't want to do the form. <laughs> so, no, I don't think that's necessarily the case. But I do think that there's sometimes a drop after someone either doesn't get the response that they want mm, yeah. or like they just don't think we're going we're acting on it and we so one of the things again we're we're small enough staff that we generally keep people up to date on what we're doing and if we're making progress or not because there are some things that quite honestly are they are just open-ended problems that i mean mm -hmm. if you've ever submitted a ticket to a vendor you know <laughs> that they go into this limbo of like yeah so no, yeah. we do have things that we tell people this is something that we're working on but it might be a while but then after that so, you know maybe that person then won't submit something for a while and then i'll be like are you sure you know and then or they'll talk to me and they'll say i'm having this problem i said oh we'll submit the ticket <laughs> so, <laughs> so i think sometimes that can affect if they're doing it or not but um i don't know i think for the most part they've i mean i don't know I can't speak for them. I keep saying I'm going to do like a formal assessment, but I found yeah. out that I can't even just do a, well, yeah, it's not <laughs> as easy a lot, as that, yeah. apparently. <laughs> so. Well, the system's working and you're getting things taken care of. So that's what matters. Yeah. So ultimately, yes. Yeah, yes. More people can, can dig into it anymore later. All right. So you have some other questions here. Um, anybody has anything? Don't forget to get your questions typed in. Um, so wants to know if can the tickets or, well, obviously reports can tickets themselves be, ex basically can everything be exported in the event that you were to move away from LibAnswers um, to something else, but you still need all of that historical data? I'm pretty sure because I'm pretty, and I guess I should try to verify that, but I'm pretty sure there's like, you can export to Excel almost every, a lot of the, like the, um, oh. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Is that okay? Sure. Sure. That's okay. Okay. No, only because I'm, I want to, if I do that, I might be able to quick, um, take a look at that. Um, 
but I know there are definitely things that um, you can do that with, or that, I mean, you can, you can, you would be able to pull it all out. Um, and I don't know if, if, again, if people are familiar with SpringShare, but one of the other things I will say about SpringShare is they are very, their support is, is really, is pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. We generally get quick responses. Um, their help is some of the better written uh, stuff out there. If you are used to reading <laughs> knowledge, you know, like, um, it, yeah, they they are pretty pretty good. Uh, their instructions are fairly clear and straightforward. Um, so I'm gonna go mm -hmm. to statistics here. Yeah, we'll see what can um, pull out of there. <laughs> yeah, export. Yep, export. Yeah, export transactions, export statistics. Um, yeah, it looks like there's quite a bit, and not just quite a bit, but yeah, you can because what you can do is you can kind of set your parameters of what you want to pull out and then export it. So. Nice. Thank you. Um, all right, so here's a question. I don't think you'd mentioned it in the slides um, previously. Uh, is there anything um, that you would have done differently now that you're using it, like as far as with the investigating, deciding what to go with, setup and everything, anything, you know, one of those like, you know, learn from our mistakes type of <laughs> so i will thing. say that maybe we should have looked at i mean i don't i don't honestly even know what else would be out there um so maybe i should have done that um I, I i got this question at, at at nla you know well how does it compare to other things i'm like that's a good question because <laughs> we haven't compared it to a lot of things um mm -hmm. and what's in what's it's a side note that's interesting is our NU uh, Nebraska University of Nebraska system is actually going uh, about to start a, a RFP for a new ticketing system for a new uh, they call it something different in the IT world right um, oh I'm for like the university itself. ISTM ISTM I think yeah ITSM sorry ITSM RFP that they're working on and apparently um, when I started around 2017, they had they had been going through trying to replace the system that they currently use. But um, I honestly, it sounded it sounds like one of the things that um, became a problem was accessibility, because mm -hmm. accessibility is is such a big thing with everything now. And mm -hmm. I, I will say on SpringShare, like I feel like they're one of the vendors that does. Um, do a lot to try to do what they can to meet the you know to meet and exceed the they're highly the, aware of all those yeah, issues yeah 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 so i think mm -hmm. um so yeah i think maybe maybe that maybe look and see uh maybe think about it more to have made it pu like something that we put out there for for public and staff instead of just staff um <laughs> Yeah. Well, can it be expanded to add? You could, you could add that as a whole. Yeah, thing. Could that be a new key yeah. to pay for then, probably or no. So I think it would truly just be adding, maybe editing our question form. Sure. And I don't even know if we would have to edit the question form. Maybe just what the initial top says, because the initial top part is very much geared towards, um, you know, mm -hmm. if staff are are filling it out. But it could be something more more general that we brought in the out. Instructions, yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. another question here: You're using this in at Carney for the library. Yes. Um, yes. So this is just you all are just using it at Carney. What yes. about the other? Um, for those of you not aware, there are multiple University of yeah, Nebraska I, locations here in the state. Um, so this isn't a this isn't a university wide of all the no, university libraries. No, 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 <laughs> no. And I mean, if we were using the, the and you, if we were using the IT system, it probably could become something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but we, I and I don't know what the other campuses are doing. I mm -hmm. think. Well, as far as reporting problems, like say within the discovery, like if they're in doing, if they're in their search, and I think someone might be just using a lib wizard form. Um, hmm. So it's just something a little more, more, 
basic, but <clears throat> one of the things, this is one of the things I will say about this specific piece of, of the SpringShare app suite, right, is that ability to kind of track things more as a ticketing system. Mm -hmm. So I know someone told me, and I don't remember if this was one of the other Nebraska universities or if this was just someone else I was talking to about this, but they said that, yes, they were using a form, a more generic form, but then it was just going into an email and they were using a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. And kind of like a Google Forms type thing. Yeah, sounds like yeah, yeah. Thing. yeah, yeah, which I just, I, I, it's a way to do it. Yeah, if you but, if you can't afford because that is right probably a very cheap way to do it. Oh, um, yeah. But as far as the tracking of it, just because this is still in a ticketing system format, it it helps. In that this regard. is a lot more in depth and for for those kind of it's specifically for that purpose. So it's got all those bells and whistles that you'd need yes. for a ticketing system as opposed to web form. Just goes in a spreadsheet and we track it and keep track yeah. of it ourselves. Yeah. That is yeah. a way to go. But, yeah. yeah, which yeah, if you, I mean, yeah, there are multiple campuses, uh, University of Nebraska, Lincoln, Omaha, <laughs> so <clears throat> with their own libraries, of course. Yeah, yeah, and they also have different tech IT um, setups, I guess. Um, it, sure. At UNL being the lar larger, uh, their library um, technology people really do have more of the technology experience. They're more, mm -hmm. and I don't know the structure. I actually don't know the structure there or anything like that. I just, having met them and us working together on some things, mm -hmm. they very much are the tech people. And mm -hmm. so there isn't quite the same um, overlap of knowledge that we have here. Um, yeah. One of our, you know, our, our person helps them out a lot in that regard so trying to, to to basically to break down the <laughs> the communication barrier of like okay the librarians are asking for this but i don't know what that means can you help me <laughs> because from the tech technical side this is what i know and from you know this is what i i can tell them but i that's not translating back to them yeah um, yeah so but they have a lot of experience. between them yes <laughs> they have a lot of technology tech experience they have a lot of knowledge um mm -hmm things yeah things that go beyond um some of what we have here so that's mm -hmm. why we share or why we should collaborate and work together mm -hmm. yeah you're separate but you are working together too on some things and exactly exactly awesome all right well i don't see any other questions okay. that we haven't gotten answered yet um we're almost to 11 o'clock so yeah. we could start working on wrapping things up yeah. Um, if anybody does have any desperate questions you want to ask of Bobby before we do, um, I got a few minutes here. I'm going to wrap things up. So go ahead and type in your questions. I'll keep an eye on the you know, anyways, while I do my little wrap up of our show. Um, so thank you so much, Bobby, for being for being here with us today. This is great. Um, I think it's going to be very useful for a lot of libraries, um, just to even even if they can't um, don't go with LibAnswer SpringShare specifically. A lot of the basics of how these kind of systems can work, and you talked about yeah. comparing or not, what to look at when you are comparing. Yeah. What to look for and look into if you're thinking about doing this kind of thing and what other options are out there. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be great. So yeah, thank you everybody for being here today. Thank you. Thank Bobby. you. Um, on our uh, go back to our main Encompass Live website here. Over there, I'm way. Um, if you use your search engine of choice and type in Encompass Live, the name of our show, we are the only thing out there called that. Nobody else is allowed to use that name. <laughs> and all of our pages will come up first in your search results. Um, we've got our upcoming shows here. And I said I was going to show you today's show is being recorded and it will be posted here to our archive. Um, I hope to have it up uh, by the end of the day today, maybe tomorrow morning. Depends on uh, GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me. Our most recent shows go at the top of the page here. And there'll be a link to the recording and a link to the slides. Uh, Bobby, you can send, did you already send those to me? I can't remember. Maybe not, because I, I actually know. just edited them this morning. Okay. So if I did, let me resend them to you. Send me your I final, will do that. yeah. I will do that right after this. Yeah, okay. So yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. And so you'll have access to all the slides. Um, everyone who attended today's show and um, 
registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when it's been posted, when the recording is available. Um, but we also do push out onto our various, uh, we have mailing lists here through the Library Commission for Libraries in Nebraska, and we do have a Facebook page. We link to it from all of our uh, Encompass Live pages, where we do also post cheers reminders about today's show. But here is the, the recording of yesterday's show is now available, so you'll see that out there. And we also use Encompass Live hashtag on Twitter and uh, Instagram to send out notices as well. While I'm here on the recordings page, I will show you there's a search feature. If you want to look, see if there's any topic we've had on the show, you can do a search. You can search our full show archives or just recent 12 months if you want just something very current and up to date. Um, and that is because this is the full show archives, and I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom because this is a huge list. This goes back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January 2009. So what is that, 10, 12, 13, some odd years, it's getting crazy. Uh, but we have everything, as long as we have a place to host all of our recordings, which right now they're all on YouTube, we will have them out available for you. Um, but do keep, and you know, that's something we do as librarians, keep things for historical purposes. But do pay attention if you watch an archive recording to the original broadcast date. Um, everything has a date showing you when it was first done live. Um, some of the shows will be fine and will stand the test of time and have great information resources. You can still use them, but some things will become old and outdated. Services and products may have changed drastically or might not exist anymore. Uh, people who did presentations may now work at a completely different library, so they're not where they were before. So just pay attention to the dates if you do watch any of our shows. Didn't look like we have any other questions. So yeah, that wraps it up today. So that wraps it up for our 2022 Encompass Live shows. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And Thank you. yeah, um, we've got our upcoming shows for January and February getting filled in here. So keep an eye on here for more shows. Our first show of 2023, we're going to talk about gaming. Uh, critical Hit Tabletop Gaming in the Library. Uh, Caitlin Lombardo, who's from our Lincoln City Libraries here in um, we'll be talking about how they run um, ooh, I gotta do that. Uh, gaming sh programming at their library. So please join us next Wednesday for that show. And any of the other shows, go ahead and register for them. Hope we will see you all in 2023. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Bobby. Thank you. Um, happy holidays to everyone. We're in the middle of all sorts of holidays now. So <laughs> and we'll hopefully see you all in a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye.